I want to share an opportunity with you. There are thousands of marketplace leaders involved in marketplace groups across the United States. And there's a wonderful infrastructure of these organizations and wonderful relationships between them. Yet the challenge remains that there are very few leaders, a very small percentage of leaders in the United States that knows that these groups exist. I was one of those leaders. I was in the, the medical device industry. I was very passionate about um, being salt and light in that space. I was very passionate about creating and innovating but I had no idea that these groups existed. And I would have loved to have known that. I would have engaged them, I would have enjoyed engaging others in them. And so that's where my story starts. In 2006 though, I began to, uh, I, I saw these Barna numbers for the first time from Barna Research. I didn't know that 84% of American adults self-identified as Christian. I did not know that 72% of American adults had made a commitment to Jesus Christ that was still important to them today. Now, 45% would answer a couple of questions indicating that they had asked Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior, but only 10% answered yes to all nine basic questions of the Christian faith that the Barna Research Poll asks. And I began to ask, why this gap? I saw evidence of this gap in the workplace and society, but why this gap? And of course, I began to feel that this is a discipleship issue, um, and it really became to be a burden with me. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, this year, I have numbers for 2014, and the numbers, while they're similar, they have dropped some. This burden took me on a journey, uh, I told the Lord that uh, I would go on this journey. He called me to the marketplace, and, and I would do this from the marketplace. And like the Lord does at times, he says, no, that's not the plan I have for you. And um, my journey actually took me to the U.S. Lausanne Movement, Mission America Coalition, where I began to understand affinity networks that had been forming over the last 30 to 40 years in prayer, um, family, mercy, justice, many areas of the body of Christ. Then I became to understand city affinity and city transformation networks. At that time, 100 cities that were working together between church, nonprofits, marketplace, to see their cities transformed by the power of the gospel. It's well over 100 cities now. And then I became uh, aware of this faith and work movement, talking with Pete Hammond and Kent Humphreys, Oz Hillman, Bob Varney, um, Many leaders, many of you in this room, began to share with me the history of the faith and work movement. And I was just blown away. Um, one of the things I appreciated the most about the faith and work movement was how, was how God was moving in so many different areas, in universities, in seminaries, in churches, in these nonprofit ministries. And I was drawn to these marketplace groups. This was the group that I most identified with, that I knew I could have benefited the most from, and um, an area that I began to see could uh, be a major part of why this discipleship gap um, existed in the United States. Historical references to these marketplace groups, many of you will know. In 1930, CBMC formed. 1950, the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. 1976, Campus Crusades Executive Ministries. 79, Fellowship of Companies for Christ. In 1984, Marketplace Chaplains. And in 86, the Navigators Business and Professionals Ministry. In 1987, this seminal book, Your Work Matters to God, was released that meant so much to so many people, which really focused on your work, your actual work matters to God. And after this point, um, the Lord seemed to move powerfully and after that, hundreds of ministries, both national in multiple cities and growing, and also just many local and regional ministries. Historical stages of these marketplace groups included primary evangelism for the first 30 to 40 years, then moving into discipleship and basic business principles. In the 1990s, moving into social entrepreneurship and a deeper understanding of your work matters to God. In the last 15 years, areas of cultural engagement, business's mission, and the inherent kingdom value of work. So why marketplace groups? 
Well, in their book, Sherman and Hendricks uh, said four things that are very applicable today. They said every worker needs to be known, accepted, and understood. Second, they need to be inspired to moral excellence. They need resources for decision making and problem solving. And finally, resources for growing in Christ's likeness on the job. And the opportunity to experience these things in fellowship with others is transformational and part of the discipleship process. Types of marketplace group content include practical biblical marketplace resources, Christ-like ethics, character, and excellence, evangelism and discipleship, vocational calling and reaching your God-given potential, realizing this inherent kingdom value of work, service to others, your company, your community, and beyond. And then finally, whole life integration of your family, work, community, and your church. Now, while not every uh, organization focuses uh, equally on all of these, it has been fascinating, even, even over the last five years, to watch a calibration of these things and incorporation into a more fullness of these various aspects of faith and work. So where are these marketplace groups? Well, they are in churches, they're in companies, and they're in communities where they are multi-church, multi-company. Examples of some of these marketplace groups are listed on this. And the first time I began to see these names, they looked like a lot of names. And they seemed at first to do very similar things. But I began to understand that they were very complementary. Um, I began to see that there was somewhat of a framework. And I want to share a little bit of, of that framework with you. And the names that I share are not comprehensive, but they're examples. And there are many, many uh, that could fit in this framework. So first, I noticed that there were broad exposure groups, then fellowship and equipping groups. There were company impacting groups. And finally, there were upstream impacting groups. Within the broad exposure category, there were conferences like the Willow Creek Leadership Summit and LeaderCast that touched tens of thousands of leaders, even in one and two days. A growing number of churches having faith and work programs and having groups, um, colleges, that had faith and work programs and groups and events, companies dedicating their company to helping transfer these faith and work principles, and a growing number of online groups. Within the fellowship and equipping category, there were training courses of finite terms. There were ongoing community groups and church groups. Within the company impacting space, CEO roundtables and workplace chaplaincy. And finally, in the upstream impacting groups, these community groups, uh, looking at ways to impact systemic issues in society. Now, I'll step through some of these training courses, like Life Work Leadership, the Master's Program, Lead Like Jesus, Biblical Entrepreneurship, Halftime, Jobs for Life, and others. Community groups like CBMC with their, um, their evangelistic lunches and their Operation Timothy that's touched so many of us, crew and navigators, uh, forward, one of the, which is one of the faster growing ministries, a, a women's marketplace ministry now in 18 cities after just two years, and at work on purpose, experimenting with some, with some different models across the city, and many others. There are church groups like Work Life, which has touched well over 100 uh, churches and um, in, in programs that can be done inside the church, fellows programs where college students and graduates are able to encounter these issues in about 30 churches right now at, at early points in their career, and then many other types of faith and work groups at churches. Within the uh, company in, impacting groups, CEO groups like C12, CBMC Leadership Institute, CEO Forum, Convene, FCCI, Truth at Work, and others. And then workplace chaplaincy groups like Corporate Chaplains of America and Marketplace Chaplains. These chaplaincy groups, I've found, have really uh, been a starting point for many companies in take, taking many next steps. And then finally, upstream impacting groups like Pinnacle Forum, Barnabas Group, the Centurions Program, which was founded by Chuck Colson, SALT, and many others. These groups being, being very passionate about the way Jesus did movements and the way Jesus looked at transformational change, but also taking examples from many heroes, one of which was Wilbur, William Wilberforce, who um, worked in England, of course, as many of you know, with uh, many peers to address 70 issues uh, of their society. 
global businesses mission groups like Open Network, Partners Worldwide, Marketplace Advance, the Global BAM Think Tank, and many others. Now the impact does uh, increase as you go down through this because you're looking at systemic upstream issues and influence, but it also goes up through this diagram as more leaders are equipped and engaged with these principles, um, acting out of faithful presence right where they are. The goal of these marketplace groups is in large part to participate in gospel transformation of leaders and communities, using the cultural mandate of being fruitful and stewarding the resources God's given us, the great commandment of loving God and others, and the great commission of making disciples as we go, all in the context of the marketplace and whole life, family, work, community, and church. Over the past six years, national marketplace group leaders have been meeting together annually to understand this fit and to build their relationships with one another. Local marketplace ministry networks have been forming in cities, understanding the same thing, but on a local level. And this is not only the national groups. In most cities, there are more local and regional groups than these national groups locally working these things out at different frequencies in different cities. There are now 40 cities approximately that we know of that are doing this and we know there's more. Conversations between cities have been increasing, looking for best practices on how to engage more people locally. Here's some examples of some of the cities that do have these collaborative marketplace groups. And as, as I mentioned before, we know there are others and are seeking them. Marketplace groups are a wonderful way for Christians to grow in their relationship to Jesus in their biblical worldview, in their family, work, community, and church, and in their outreach and service to others. Again, the opportunity is that there are thousands of leaders engaged in these and many other marketplace groups, and there's a wonderful infrastructure of relationship and organic nature, both nationally and locally, of these groups. The challenge is that a very few percentage of leaders in the United States still know that these groups exist. So here's the ask. Will you help engage and promote these groups in your sphere of influence, in your organization and church, and in your city? You may also be called to start new groups. I think more and more these groups have a mindset of abundance and not scarcity. So whether it's engaging or starting, will you help engage and promote these groups? Will you also help discover faith and work city networks? As I mentioned, there are approximately 40 cities that we know of that are at some level of these, and also as a subgroup in the marketplace, engaging with their larger city transformation networks in their city. But we would love to have help in tracking 70 of the other top 110, and even beyond that. This is one of the reasons that we uh, founded this organic National Faith and Work Association, which is really a collaboration of multiple groups working together it's not a formal organization, but rather a semi-formal network uh, where many of us are working together. And uh, by the way, you can join on LinkedIn, um, and we would love to have your engagement there, as well as um, at the table outside, we have a list of these 110 cities and where some of these ministries are. And um, you can see which 40 are listed, and maybe you could help with some of the 70 where you may know catalysts in those areas or networks that are already there. Um, this National Faith and Work Association is not just groups. I mean, we desire to connect, and the steering committee is from all of these different areas. We desire to uh, just engage with what God is already doing and helping to promote that. So finally, will you help, again, engage and promote marketplace groups in your sphere of influence, in your organization and church, and in your city? And will you help us discover other cities, especially these next 70 cities of this 110 that we've begun tracking? Thank you very much. Okay, we've actually had this conversation, so I'm going to ask the question, what do you say to a guy like me, um, and I'm sure I represent lots of others, very busy, has, has their, his or her head down, and doesn't necessarily want to want to connect, or, or just doesn't feel like they have the time. How, what do you say to someone like me that's, that's caught in that tension? Well, there are two things. Um, one of those things is that uh, we do find that there are catalytic uh, giftings and passions, uh, and there are others who have other giftings and passions. And so part of it is just trusting the Lord to each person's uh, interest level. 
Um, also, I think looking at the biblical foundations for much of this, in John 17, 20 through 23, in Philippians 2, 1 through 4, um, unity passages, uh, deferring and uh, like-mindedness passages, I've seen other people who haven't had an interest say, wow, I am called to this. So part of it is just depending on the Lord for, um, I should say all of it is depending on the Lord for the level of engagement that each person has. Mm -hmm.